how to perform CAPD. This video will demonstrate how to perform the CAPD process since it's a function that is not performed frequently and the steps are very detailed. There are two different systems or lines of products available for the CAPD process, Baxter and Fresenius. The process is basically the same for the two different systems. You can use all the supplies with either the Baxter or the Fresenius system. First step is to order the CAPD cart from Central Supply and an IV pole. The CAPD cart has the Fresenius dialysate solution, but not the Baxter dialysate solution. So this will need to be ordered separately and placed outside the patient's room on a cart or table. The expiration dates on the supplies all need to be checked before they are used. The nurse reviews the physician's order for CAPD and prepares the right dialysate solution as per order. Check the name of the solution, concentration, manufacture, Baxter or Fresenius, and expiration date. Collect the supplies needed, dialysate solution, Y-shaped tubing, mini caps, glue clamp, plastic hemostat, non-sterile gloves, germicidal disposable wipes, and a box of masks. Warm the CAPD solution in the microwave for two to three minutes until the bag is tepid to touch. Warming the solution is a comfort measure for the patient. Most solution bags come in a protective outer wrapper that allows for microwave heating. Do not microwave a bag of solution after it has been removed from its wrapper because microwaving can change the chemical makeup of the solution. Turn the bag back and forth several times. And test the solution against your inner arm to be certain there are no hot spots from microwaving. What may be confusing is that the manufacturer's packaging of the supplies are different. For example, the Baxter dialysate solution may come with the Y connection tubing attached to the dialysate bag in a pre wrapped bag, so all of this is warmed in the microwave. Whereas with the Fresenius, the Y tubing is packaged separately. While the dialysate bag is warming, you may get the room set up for the exchange. Clear your workspace the bedside table. Wipe the table with the germicidal disposable wipes. Place your equipment on the table. Mini cap, lube clamp, plastic hemostat in case you need to clamp the tubing, and the Y-set tubing. After you have obtained the warm dialysate bag, close the patient's door to the room, all the vents, and windows to avoid drafts. Post a sign, CAPD in progress, do not enter on the patient's door. Put your mask on and assist the patient with putting on their mask. Ask visitors to leave the room or to put on a mask if staying. Wash your hands after donning patient's mask. Remember to use aseptic technique while performing the CAPD procedure. Put on your blue gloves. Inspect the warm bag, especially the seams, for any leakage and check the temperature of the bag. Remember it should be tepid to the touch on the inner arm. Ensure the patient's catheter is visible and readily available to be used and that it is clamped. Note the patient's catheter may come in different colors. Hang the dialysate bag on the IV pole and weigh it. Record the weight on the CAPD flow sheet. 
Again, check for the correct concentration, clarity, and expiration date. Remove the Y set from the bag and close the blue clamp and the white clamps that are on the Y set. Aseptically attach the long end of the Y set to the dialysate bag. Aseptically attach the short end of the Y set to the patient. Removing the cap on the Y set first and the segment mini cap on the patient's catheter. On the patient's exit side tubing, there is a white connection clamp, or it can be a different color. Now the tubing needs to be primed. Open both clamps, blue clamp, then the white clamp. The fluid will go down the Y set and into the drainage bag, which is on the floor. After approximately 100 mils of solution has drained into the bag, Close the blue clamp beneath the dialysate bag. Now you are ready to drain the fluid from the patient's abdomen into the drainage bag. Open the patient's catheter clamp. This white connection has two notches that must be lined up together before turning to lock or unlock the connection. You will hear a click sound when doing this. Next, open the white clamp above the drainage bag. Drainage usually takes 10 to 30 minutes. If there is little or no drainage, have the patient turn side to side in bed several times. Constipation may be a barrier for not emptying completely. When the patient feels empty and the drainage bag is full, close the white clamp that is on the tubing above the drainage bag and apply the blue clamp on the tubing to the drainage bag. Obtain the patient's dry weight by using a standing scale or the scale on the bed. Then record the dry weight on the CAPD flow sheet. Open the blue clamp from the dialysate bag to let the fluid flow into the patient's abdomen. While the dialysate solution is infusing into the patient, Check the fluid in the drainage bag for fibrin, which looks like cotton wool floating in the fluid. Check for clarity of the fluid. A quick way to do this is to place a piece of paper with writing underneath the drainage bag, and if able to read the paper, then the outflow fluid is clear. If you are unable to read the paper, then the fluid is cloudy, which needs to be reported to the physician. Again, if the outflow fluid is cloudy, presence of fibrin or a decrease amount of outflow volume occurs, notify the physician. When the infusion is complete, remove gloves, wash hands, and apply new gloves before disconnecting the patient. Close the blue clamp and close the patient's catheter clamp, the white connection, or another color. Remember to listen for the click on the patient's exit side line and apply the mini cap using aseptic technique. So now the patient should be totally disconnected from the tubing. Weigh the drainage bag and record on the flow sheet. Notify the physician if cloudy fluid or fibrin shreds or decreased amount of fluid out or flow problems and document all this on the CAPD sheet. Do not empty the drainage bag if the fluid is cloudy, presence of fibrin or decreased amount of outflow fluid. After speaking with the physician, you might need to obtain a specimen from the outflow bag. Use aseptic technique to obtain the specimen. The specimen will be for culture and sensitivity and PD cell count. Empty the fluid in the toilet following the infection control protocol. The catheter tubing and exit site should be assessed for potential signs and symptoms of infection and peritonitis with every exchange. 
Assess for exit side infection. Creamy gray, brown, green, or yellowish drainage. Redness and swelling at the exit site or tenderness and pain at the exit site. Tunnel infections, pain along tunnel path, fever or swelling, or a red streak over the tunnel path. Peritonitis, cloudy dialysate return, abdominal pain, fever, diarrhea, vomiting, or abdominal distension. Also prevent constipation by daily assessment with proper follow-up. Exit site care is completed daily, which consists of cleaning the tubing and the skin immediately around the catheter with soap and water. Dry thoroughly and apply a dry dressing. On occasion, the exit site might have a topical antibiotic ointment applied to it. If you have any questions, please contact the dialysate team. The operator has the phone number. Mm -hmm.